Everyone feels man coming at you. So Cloud Anchors, this is basically one thing that I was trying to take a look at as a follow-up to multiplayer is how you could actually practically go about using multiplayer in the context of augmented reality. As I did the prep work for this and I was hoping to make this into a tutorial, I realized I only have one AR compatible device. And so there's not even really a good way for me to test everything that I'm about to cover in this video. So instead, what I decided to do, let me take the research that I ended up doing anyway, put this into an overview video, kind of similar to what we did for multiplayer. That way you have kind of a more comprehensive guide that you can use as a reference if you're kind of comparing and contrasting a bunch of different solutions, which I was kind of surprised by, but maybe I shouldn't have been, the fact that I couldn't find anything that was talking about the current state of Cloud Anchors, which hopefully this video helps to address. So there you go. And I'd love to hear down in the comments below if you are an AR developer, specifically mobile AR, have you used Cloud Anchors? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, let me know. And if you do find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like because that really does help out the channel a ton. Okay, first, what are Cloud Anchors? Cloud Anchors, basically in a nutshell, is the ability for us to take a physical point in what one device sees. So for example, let's, my hand is probably a really bad example. Let's say the mic here. Let's say the mic is our anchor point. Now, on device one, I see the mic, but I initialized in some unknown state with some unknown coordinate system origin, which is the basis for my phone. A second device, unless it magically happened to be initializing in the same space as the first device, has a different coordinate system. And so when it looks at this mic, it sees that it has a different coordinate compared to the first device. So what Cloud Anchors looks to resolve is given these two different coordinate systems, how can you map this one object into both coordinate systems so that they can communicate in the physical space with the same understanding of the real world, regardless of the initial coordinate system that they launch with. So hopefully that made sense. If you have questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'm happy to, to go into it in more detail, but that's the general premise behind it. There are a few different solutions that are out there. So for starters, you have what's what's on here, which is the AR kit version of a multi-user AR experience with their own AR cloud anchors. And exactly as is in this diagram, you have device A, device B, they each say, see this anchor, and now they wanna start communicating and sharing the same augmented reality world space. So that's basically the, the, the kind of quick diagram here. Now, as is all things Apple, this only works with iOS devices and in their own custom multiplayer, Bluetooth, local, Wi-Fi, weird, hybrid-y setup that honestly, if you are at all considering trying to support Android, this is a complete waste of time. <laughs> really, I would only care about this if you only want to support iOS devices. I would imagine most production developments will maybe just maybe want to consider Android. So you can really ignore this for now other than it's something fun to, to dive into. Really the two things we want to talk about are Google Cloud and Google Cloud Anchors and Microsoft and Spatial Anchors. And I'm kind of surprised because Spatial Anchors doesn't really get a ton of love, at least as far as I can see on on YouTube when, I, when I'm searching for this. I really only see tutorials that are around uh, Google Cloud Anchors, which I guess we'll talk about first. I will say since we were using Google Cloud, I do have a referral link. I don't really get anything out of that unless you happen to pay down the line to use Google Cloud, but it does get you an extra free $50 when you sign up for your own free Google account. There'll be a link to that in the description below. Hopefully that helps you out in terms of building your own cloud projects, which is really what I wanna see a lot more people move towards. But anyway, Google Cloud is your abstracted out way where as an API, Google provides you a solution where you can automatically do that cloud anchor synchronization. They have a bunch of different samples from Android to iOS. You can do cross device, which is exactly what we wanna see. They have a Unity sample, which I definitely recommend checking out. And I think one really nice thing that they provide as part of their sample 
Let's see if I can find it real quick. So on this page, you can see here, they do provide a sample for using UNet with Cloud Anchors, which I think is really useful in terms of actually figuring out how you want to set up your own sample scene that uses multiplayer and AR Cloud Anchors. So that's a pretty big plus here. One thing that I found personally a little confusing when I was trying to figure out like how does everything work is pricing. And there didn't really seem to be a good answer for that. So let me address that right here. The way Google Cloud does their pricing is on an API calls per month basis. And you can see exactly how much each of these costs in terms of you basically get 2 million API calls across all your users in one month, and that's free. If you exceed that 2 million mark, then it becomes $3 per million. And then of course, after a billion, then it becomes 150. So basically it starts free, there's a price increase for average usage, and then it drops back down for, for scalable usage. So that's, that's kind of what you're looking at. In terms of the actual APIs, I haven't dived specifically into how many APIs are called for like each function and having mapped that out. But typically what you would see is like there's one for the scan and then one for each time you call AR Anchor. So in some sense that might kind of depend a little bit on the more you use the SDK and call a bunch of functions, the more API calls you're going to make to Google Cloud. And your goal will typically be to try and minimize that, of course, while maximizing a good user experience. So that's Cloud Anchors. There, there are several tutorials, as I mentioned, already out there. So because I don't have the devices, I figured it doesn't really make sense for me to do them, but you can definitely check out those tutorials for how you can set up your own Cloud Anchors. And they have their own tutorials here as well. The other one that I think is worth taking a look at is Spatial Anchors, which is basically Microsoft's exact version of Cloud Anchors, if you will, uh, specifically more so designed for their HoloLens, but works with AR Core and AR Kit as well. Uh, unlike Cloud Anchors, their pricing is a little bit more transparent, in my opinion, at least. And they, they tell you exactly, in, in a similar fashion, how many locate requests you're allowed. So up to 10,000, I believe, yes, per month is free. Beyond that is going to be two cents per request, I believe. Yeah, per ALR per month is gonna be two cents. So uh, there you go. I think that's a little bit more transparent in terms of how your APIs get requested. The one nice thing about say Google Cloud's APIs is that this is consistent across all of the APIs. So for example, like if let's say you're using Google Cloud API, but then you use another Google Pl Cloud product, it'll aggregate all of that in, into the API. So uh, if you're really trying to hit scale, it'll be a little bit cheaper, in, in, at least in cost per million, right? So something to keep in mind. As far as spatial anchors go, like I mentioned before, it works with HoloLens, is primarily why it was built out, so that you can sync HoloLens devices together, but there's nothing stopping it from working with AR Core and AR Kit. Uh, as you can see right here, they have a bunch of different SDKs for different Unity projects. One thing, I couldn't seem to find, at least looking through the docs, is a multiplayer sample that, that was readily available right now. As far as I can see, the samples are based solely just on getting spatial anchors working, and then it's up to you to sync them. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I didn't dive too much specifically into spatial anchors in and of itself, but at least at a first cursory glance of it, their samples didn't seem to support it. So there you have it, just kind of a very cursory overview between uh, Google Cloud versus Spatial Anchors. And I think a lot of this one kind of comes down to, to pricing. In terms of features, they'll probably be pretty similar and each of them actively working on their own computer vision. So like, I, I don't have a con confirmed way to actually test it, but that that's at least one approach to, to keep in mind there. I, I think they would be realistically the same. Google and, and Microsoft have been working pretty heavily on this type of solutions. I mean, Google from the Tango days, and then uh, you also have Microsoft working on it in the context of HoloLens. So in that regard, I think they're pretty solid solutions that are coming from well-known companies. Pricing wise, I will say, 
as far as I understand for the APIs, Google Cloud will be slightly cheaper. I mean, if you if you just work out the math here real quick. So one API call costs you this much, which is basically nothing. And then if you want, let's say per user, you spend even a thousand, right? That's a third of a cent per user, which I think is which is significantly cheaper even at this maximum range here than the Spatial Anchors one. So that's something to keep in mind. And again, like I said, you also have a referral link that will reduce the cost and allow you to play with that for free. Uh, I believe Microsoft has theirs as well, but I think you get a little less money. So something to keep in mind with in terms of pricing, if you're just trying to mess around and get into AR that well, one, one solution definitely seems a little bit cheaper than the other. And then if you eventually take it to production, you, you know what the costs are. So otherwise, I think I'll leave this video here for now. Again, let me know down in the comments. Have you used these? What have you thought about them? If you haven't, is this something you might consider using? I'd love to know down in the comments below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.